Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I would like to discuss the audibility of intermodulation distortion. And so what I've decided to do is put together a simple test that highlights that perhaps uh, IMD is affecting the reproduced music that we hear. And it's interesting that the recent video that was released showing the flaws in MQA as a digital compression format was looking at noise and the artifacts that were generated by the MQA algorithm and it just kind of reinforces the importance to show objective test data and to highlight that it's important in this industry that things remain clear and open so that everybody can make informed decisions regarding the performance, whether it be digital file algorithms, DACs, amplifiers, or loudspeakers. Um, this industry is fraught with hyperbole, subjective opinion, and people are making impulse buys based on you know what reviewers rave about only to be very disappointed with what they end up with so this I feel is a guiding light perhaps not IMD specifically but just in general the idea of a objective test data speakers are tested to perform to a certain standard by pretty much every reputable manufacturer and so um, why wouldn't the consumer rely on objective test data to uh, make their buying decisions? So in this video, I'm just going to update you on where I'm at with my study of IMD as a, um, as a metric for evaluating the sound quality of speakers. And so to start off, what I'd like to do is play a one of my favorite tracks by Paul Horn and it's him playing the bass flute in the Taj Mahal and so within FUBAR which is a digital play it's a music playback uh, program there's a feature called spectrogram which shows you the spectral content of your music as it plays and so I'm going to play the song here and you can see um, at the beginning of the track there's the fundamental harmonic of his bass flute and then there's all the other harmonics related to the instrument but you'll notice I'm just gonna pa pause the track here you notice that in between the harmonics you can see the 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 gray textured area here which represents the space information related to the venue and the way that the sound reverberates down the corridors of the Taj Mahal and so that when played back on high quality speakers this is a incredibly beautiful soundtrack that just is rich in harmonics rich in space and it just has this three-dimensional sound to it with the depth um, you're just able to to feel like you're actually there and so um, my reasoning for showing you this is because um, I think the only real way that I can show the audibility of intermodulation distortion is to show that it's having a negative impact on this low level detail that you're seeing in between the harmonics of his, of his instrument. You could argue that those this, um, this gray textured area is not audible. I guess it's up to you to prove me otherwise, but I'm going to assume that this is uh, the content that we're hearing, which is that that space information that makes the song so beautiful. And so to continue with my testing and to highlight my point, I brought this digital file, song file, into Audacity. And then I cut through the uh, spec, I, I took a particular point in time in the track, um, specifically at one second. And I sliced through and looked at the harmonic spectra of the song. Um, at one second into the test track and so the result from that is shown here and so this is the spectra of Paul's song at one second into the t into the track and you can see here this is the album for Paul's Paul's um, music if you want to look it up there I'll put a link in my description and so 
there's a few things that can be gleaned from this information that we're seeing. So just to just to walk you through it a bit, the bottom horizontal is frequency, and then the left side is decibel level of the track. And so audacity is simply showing um, the highest point in the, the main harmonic of his instrument, which starts at minus 19 dB down uh, from absolute zero in the digital file. So you can see that it's worth noting that the low level detail starts a full 56 dB down from the loudest part um, on his instrument. And so you can also see these spikes here which represent the additional harmonics in his instrument. And so you can see the amount of information, the amount of low level content in, this, in the music that's produced and where it's at in terms of the decibel level in the track. So why do I bring this up? Well, this correlates very closely with the multi-tone testing that I've been conducting in Arda. And so I'm gonna go and show you what this looks like. And so within Arda, it has the ability to produce this multi-tone test where it's producing sine wave tones at, for example, 200 hertz, 500 hertz, one kilohertz, at, you know, fundamental or, um, you know, octaves above. And so what we're seeing here is the speaker itself generates non-harmonically related noise. This is not in the test tone. It's not in your music. It's simply noise generated by the speaker itself. And so you can see if we want to compare apples to apples, you look at minus 30 dB, minus 90 dB. We're just above 60 uh, dB um, with the noise is 60 dB down from the, the fundamental test tones that we're seeing. And so if we actually just simply overlay this noise into the test track, we get a really good sense of where our speaker's performance lies within its ability to retrieve the low level detail in the music. And so I've simply drawn a black dashed line that represents the noise that I that I that I was able to measure um, in the measurements that I had just shown you, and so you can see here that it's pretty much in the middle of the low level detail content that's available in the the digital file itself, and so I can conclude at the very least that it's affecting the reproduction of the music. I can't make a claim that it's impacting the your audit the audibility of the music, but I can certainly make the claim that it's having a measured impact on on the reproduction of your music. So um, to take this a step further and to apply some more context, I decided to measure some other drivers. And so here I've shown some other drivers with their test results in terms of their uh, noise level and intermodulation distortion. And so you can see the TAD and the C's full range driver, a um, highly regarded scan speak dome tweeter, and then an, um, beating them all at minus 90 dB down is the SB Acoustics. 29 millimeter dome in a in the 1159 stand mount speaker which is which is horn loaded um, so this uh, as far this is as far as I took it with my testing um, I'm going to continue to look at this as a topic to see if I can uh, further prove the you know subjective objective correlation with with IMD as a as a measurement type so leave a comment if you have any suggestions uh, feel free to to put a comment in there and I'll also put the link to the original blog post on this so take care and have a great day